the Maelstrom Wanderer versus Perforos, God of the Forge. Another one lander. We're not doing so well with the starting hands this evening. I'm doing a bit of a recording session and I keep starting with one land hands. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm going to have to hope that our opponent doesn't get off to a fast start with their Perforos deck. Well, three visits makes that hand. Yeah, it makes it much better, actually. Maelstrom Wanderer is a teamer commander for eight mana. A 7-5 gives our creatures haste and you cascade twice when you cast it. And speaking of not getting off to fast starts, our opponent does, of course, get into a lightning fast start, but they only have three cards in hand. So we'll just have to hope that they don't have uh, a wheel in hand, although a wheel wouldn't be too detrimental for us. Perforos, God of the Forge, is an indestructible god, 6-5 for four mana. As long as your devotion to red is less than five, it isn't a creature. And whenever another creature enters under your control, it deals two damage to each opponent. You can also pay three to give your creatures plus one to their attack until the end of the turn. And Zozu comes down. When a land enters under our control, when a land enters the battlefield, it deals two damage to the land's controller. That is going to deal a lot of damage to us, because we need to ramp in a Maelstrom Wanderer deck. So we're just pretty much getting to the point where it's all or nothing now. Okay, Relic of Progenitus tapping to make us exile a card from our graveyard. We don't care about our graveyard in this deck, so not too worried about that. My opponent's down to two cards in hand. And they just decide to pump Zozu up with Perforos' ability. Okay, Thran Dynamo is... That means four, five, six, seven. Yeah, that means that we've got a Maelstrom Wanderer next turn. Just have to hope that our opponent doesn't have Artifact Destruction in hand. They are in red, so there's every chance that they will. Now, we could risk going for a Prophet of Crufix next turn if our Thran Dynamo survives and then doing the Maelstrom Wanderer on our opponent's turn, but that Inferno Titan changes my mind instantly with that. Uh, actually, no it doesn't. The fact that our opponent's tapped out means that we can go Prophet of Crufix and then... Yeah, get down Maelstrom Wanderer at instant speed. So we'll go for exactly that. Now the problem is that if we... Yeah, Infernal Titan's going to swing in at us for 3 damage. And then all our opponent needs to do is get a creature down onto the battlefield and Perforos will... Uh, will deal two damage to us. So it looks like our opponent's got us here. Mana Crypt and Mox Diamond for a turn one Perforos means that you can get down a lightning fast win. Who knew? And there we go. Our opponent gets down two creatures. So that means that... No, oh, actually, they get down three creatures, so that's six damage to us with Perforos. Uh, we could Chaos Warp in response to that, but then... Our opponent can Inferno Titan their way through. And yeah, we are dead either way. Uh, we could chump with Beast Caller Savant. Oh, well, we might as well try it. Okay, they get down a hammer of Perforos. Which they can't activate because they don't have the mana. Ah, but <laughs> I forgot about the other ability. Hammer of Perforos gives creatures haste. So there we go. Looks like our opponent was getting there either way. A lightning fast start for Perforos, God of the Forge. And there we go. I'm just curious to see what we would have gotten into with Maelstrom Wanderer. So let's 
try and draw cards. City of Brass. Uh, right, we would have gotten into a one power stone. Oh, and a bunch of lands. A whole bunch of lands on top. This would have been good to clear all this off. Okay, uh, even more, okay. And a Kiki Jiki, yeah, that wouldn't have helped us. Yeah, that wouldn't have helped us at all. We we can't copy the Maelstrom Wanderer and get more Cascade Triggers with Kiki Jiki. It doesn't work that way, so our opponent definitely had us there. I'll see you all in the next one. The Maelstrom Wanderer versus Izoni Thousand Eyed. Yeah, I think that can be pretty good. That means that a turn 2 Sakura Tribe Elder into a turn 3 Bloodbraid Elf, and we can hopefully cascade into something half decent. Yeah, we'll just lead off with the Rootbound Crag and throw it over to our opponent, see if we can quickly go over the commanders. An 8 mana Teamer Commander gives our creatures haste and cascade twice when we cast it. It is a 7 5 Commander. And then for 6 mana in Golgari, when it decides that it wants to expand, come on magic, there we go. 6 mana in Golgari, a 2-3, when it enters, you create a black and green insect for each creature in your graveyard. And then for Golgari and sack a creature, you gain a life and draw a card. Yeah, it's always difficult to know what to do with a Lotus Cobra, I think... Uh, yeah, I think we can still get down Bloodbraid Elf next turn, can't we? So we'll go for Lotus Cobra because it can generate more mana than Sakura Tribe Elder can. Lotus Cobra has Landfall, add a mana of any colour to your mana pool. And you seldom see people playing this card, it's very, very good. The Azoni player has gone for a Utopia Sprawl on their, um, on their Overgrown Tomb, by the way. And then they have a Westvale Abbey. And they get down Sater Wayfinder in order to mill some cards into their graveyard. Uh, okay, for Cundity, Assassin's Trophy. Okay, they had Sadisi, Undead Vizier. Uh, did they... Oh, they used Reanimate to get Sadisi, Undead Vizier back. And they sacrifice their Sata Wayfinder to Sadisi Undead Vizier, so they get to Tutor now. They've only got four cards left in hand, so I'm hoping they're going for a land with that. Alright, let's go for a Tropical Island with the Polluted Delta. And two lands have entered, so we get two mana there. That means that we can go for Sakura Tribe Elder. Then get another landfall trigger from the Sakura Tribe Elder. We'll get ourselves into a basic here. We'll just grab a basic forest. And that means that we can get into Bloodbraid Elf. So let's see how we cascade here. Okay, Cross and Grip can at least target the Utopia Sprawl. So that's less mana for our opponent. Now, Bloodbraid Elf does have haste, but we're not going to swing in because the Sadisi Undead Vizier has 6 toughness to our 3 power. Next turn, if we go for a fetch, we'll have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So we could go for Tooth and Nail without Entwine if we wanted to. Might just have to go for Breeding Pool and set up for... Yeah, that'll be 5... Six, seven, eight. Yeah, that would be Maelstrom Wanderer next turn. Yeah, so we'll go for that in tapped. That can add green for the Miri's Guile. And then we can start filtering our draws and perhaps setting up a little bit for the Maelstrom Wanderer. Okay, and down comes Parallel Lives. Our opponent has one... Uh, yeah, only one creature in the graveyard, so they will get two insects if they play their commander. Okay, Shardless Agent we can cascade into if we want to. So let's just 
Oh, actually, it doesn't actually matter, does it? Because we're going to do this. Yeah, we're going to shuffle our library anyway. So it doesn't actually matter what we put on top with Miri's Guile. So we've got two mana from the Lotus Cobra, and then three, four, five, six, seven, and eight allows us to cast our Maelstrom Wanderer. And now that, we can swing into Sidisi Undead Vizier, our Canis, the Omnipotent. Oh, I mean, they're, they're probably a couple of the best Cascades that we could ever hope to get into, and they have haste. Let's draw three cards here. Okay. And then we can swing in with both of these. And if our opponent wants to block the Maelstrom Wanderer, that's fine with me. They might be able to reanimate it again and tutor for something else, but they're struggling on mana as it stands now. The more times we can cast Maelstrom Wanderer, the better. And we're going to draw some cards here, thanks to Consecrated Sphinx. Every time our opponent draws a card, we get to draw two. It looks like our opponent is still struggling on mana, but there we go. Sky, Sh Sky Shroud Claim will allow them to throw in two lands untapped. Don't know if it's a little bit too late for them, but... I won't count my chickens until they've hatched. They are about to have six cards in hand if they go for the Skull Clamp. But it doesn't look like they are, so they might have a Vampiric Tutor in hand, or a Worldly Tutor. Okay, Prophet of Crufix is absolutely what we're going to go for here. Although Oracle of Muldaya wouldn't be terrible, because we have lands in hand. But we're definitely going for Prophet here. And then... If we draw the cards, actually, we'll draw into the Oracle, which will be, yeah, that'll be okay, because we'll be able to drop another land, which means we'll be able to afford the Prophet of Crufix. Yeah, we'll get the Cinderglade down, and down comes Prophet of Crufix, which I'm sure our opponent's very happy to see. And then we'll swing in with everything that we can. And it looks like our opponent is down to zero next turn, unless they manage to do something here. And just to rub salt into the wound, when it rains it pours. Scavenging Goose. Scavenging Goose allows us to exile cards from their graveyard. But yeah, it looks like our opponent didn't have the board wipe they needed. And we might have been able to draw into a counter spell anyway. No, it just lands on the top. And then a couple of draws from Muldrifter, maybe. No, we weren't going to manage it, but... Yeah, Board Wipe would have been pretty much all they could have gone for there. And even then, we had a full grip of cards and a load of mana. So, we were just too fast for our opponent, apparently. They were stuck on mana for a little bit, so... That's just the way it goes sometimes. It's unlucky for our opponent, but... Very lucky for us. Maelstrom Wanderer versus Izoni Thousand-Eyed. I'm Travel Kai on the EDH channel. Thank you for watching.